One of the trickiest parts of photographing wildlife is how quickly they move. Not only do you have to worry as a shooter about tracking them side to side and up and down, but also on a depth of field axis, moving to and from the camera. In order to land shots, you need to nail focus perfectly. And for this, people often use autofocus, but what if I suggested that there was a different way? What if I suggested using manual focus? Now, before I dive into this video, remember that this is my opinion and my way of doing things. This past weekend on my main channel, I released a video that I'd highly recommend checking out in which I photographed one of the world's fastest birds, the white-throated swift. All types of swifts are notoriously known to be difficult to photograph due to not only their speed, but also their small size, and even more so, their ability to abruptly change direction in flight. However, I chose to photograph them using manual focus as opposed to autofocus and pulled away with some detailed, nice close-up shots that others often wind up missing. Now, before we dive into why I choose manual focus, let's talk about why I don't choose autofocus. Now, no matter what type of autofocus system you use from whatever camera brand, the more complicated the composition and the situation and the clutter gets in your frame, the more difficult it is for the autofocus to land correctly. Even with the most advanced of cameras, you'll wind up finding that in some situations they just can't pull through and can't pull focus on the subject that you're looking to pull focus on. Whether that's a phase detect system, a contrast based system, or a depth by defocus system, all three are going to have their limitations and scenarios in which they just don't work. And I don't really like being limited by my compositions and by what I choose to include in the frame in order to nail focus. So a great example of this is shooting pinion jays. About six months ago, I went out and shot pinion jays out in the foothills on the other side of the Sierras from where I live. And I got a lot of scenarios in which there were very nice clean backgrounds removed from the subject. The subject stood out very clearly and it was easy for autofocus to work and situations like that. Those situations lend themselves to being able to use autofocus because the easier it is for the camera to detect the subject through bird detection or center point detection, whatever it may be, the easier it'll be for the camera to nail focus through autofocus. However, in situations like this Western bluebird that I shot in the middle of a forest on a stump, it was a very much more landscape type shot with a bird included in it. And in a situation like this, the autofocus is gonna have a really difficult time choosing to track onto that bird rather than maybe some of the bark that's going on in the ground or the trunk itself, or maybe the grass in the foreground or the trees in the background. And so because of this fact that autofocus doesn't always know what to tack onto, I generally prefer to stay away from it. Since we've talked about why I don't use autofocus, let's talk about why I choose manual focus. So to start out, I can control this factor. This is a learnable skill as opposed to autofocus that is somewhat learnable and somewhat a skill. It still very heavily relies on the computer system in your camera to capture the image. Whereas manual focus relies almost solely and completely on your own ability to be able to notice and recognize focus, being able to tack focus, not only visually, but also knowing how to turn your manual focus ring correctly. So this skill for me allows me to have a lot more control over my situation. Beyond this, no scene is too cluttered for me to be able to shoot manual focus, as opposed to what I was talking about with autofocus, where some scenes can be a little bit too cluttered or maybe a little bit too backlit to correctly hit that focus with autofocus, at least easily. Manual focus, that never is a situation because all that matters is what you're seeing and your ability to tack the focus, and there's nothing that can possibly distract you too far from that. Beyond this, it's also much more frustrating for me to miss a shot due to autofocus problems rather than missing a shot due to my own manual focus lack of skill. For me personally, I'd rather miss a shot because I knew that my skill level just wasn't there yet and maybe I have a lot of room to grow in there or there just wasn't really a possibility for it to be tacked in this scenario rather than missing a shot due to autofocus and a tool failing to do its job in that scenario. That is, that is incredibly, incredibly frustrating for me. It was the large, largest reason why I switched to doing manual focus a couple of years ago. Now, I know what you're thinking. None of this even matters about accuracy if manual focus isn't quick enough to get the shot in the first place. But before I tell you guys the results of the tests that I did side by side between autofocus and manual focus, I'd like to let you guys know really quick that I'm gonna be giving away a free one month mentorship to someone who goes and comments on the White Throated Swift video that I just released this last Saturday on my main channel. Make sure to go over there, leave a comment, leave a like, 
and send a screenshot to my email of that comment, jeremyknipe at gmail.com, and you'll be entered for a chance to win a free mentorship with me. Now, how quick can you really get with manual focus? That's the big question, because speed matters almost just as much as accuracy in a world in which we live like wildlife photography, where everything happens so quickly. So what I did to test this out, unfortunately I don't have a ninja recorder or anything to record a live view of the back of my camera for a situation like this. Otherwise I would have loved to show you guys visually the results that I had, as well as I couldn't just take a simple video of it because video changes the autofocus uh, functionality and the way that autofocus works. So in terms of my test, what I did was I had a bird perched up on a perch and I tested the difference in time from having a previous composition to moving to the composition with the bird on the perch and the time that it took not only to move and recompose but also to tack focus. Now, in these results, with manual focus, I got about 0.5 seconds when I averaged this out over three different trial runs. And with autofocus, I wound up getting about 0.3 seconds when I averaged it out over three different trial, trial runs with all relatively similar composures and compositions. Now, I know what you're saying. Autofocus is faster. And yes, admittedly, it is. But the thing was, in those situations where I wound up missing autofocus in a couple of different tests, and let's say the autofocus tacked on to the moon in the sky behind it or a tree way far out in the background or something in the foreground, it took drastically longer longer for autofocus to be able to correct itself. And it took a process of me being able to move the autofocus through manipulating it with tree branches and trees to be able to retack focus onto the bird and wound up being two to three seconds or sometimes even more before I was finally able to get the shot. That's a problem. As opposed to manual focus, if I was to miss that first shot, usually it only took me within another half second to correct it and get it fine-tuned or even less than a half a second. So with manual focus, it's much, much more forgiving when you slightly miss that shot at first because you're still in a relatively similar depth of field. Versus in autofocus, if you miss the shot and it winds up tacking focus onto something else, it takes a lot longer for it to hunt back to the correct situation and for you as an operator to manipulate it back and to the correct situation. So in real life, I thought about this in the context of real life. Often in real life, 0.2 seconds doesn't make a drastically huge difference in wildlife photography. And hear me out why. In your best shots, in the, the best shots you will ever take in your wildlife photography, they very rarely, if ever, come in moments where you're not prepared in the first place. Often you are so prepared and ready for the shot that when it happens, all you're doing is clicking the shutter. Take, for example, something like my Vermilion flycatcher that I released on my main channel a little while ago and getting that image it wasn't something that just randomly popped up in the moment but I was prepared for it with my manual focus and I was ready for the shot and when it happened everything just fell into place there was really no last second decisions that came into my mind during that scenario or even in these shots with the white-throated swifts even though they're moving incredibly fast I was prepared and constantly looking for that focus and there was never a moment where I was just caught off guard and like all, all of a sudden there was a swift right there and I couldn't tack focus on it because of that 0.2 second difference. So for me, manual focus seems to be much more reliable, especially when you're prepared in situations. Now, I don't want to talk too much about the different techniques that are available for manual focus shooters, but I'll just briefly mention them. I have videos on my main channel in which I go into much more detail on how you can do it and what you can do with these techniques, how you can practice them. However, I'll mention the techniques really quick. There's a technique called pre-focusing in which essentially you know the pattern or behavior of an animal species and so you pre-focus to a certain location leave it locked off there and then as they cross that depth of field or land on that perch or land in that spot wherever it may be you fire off the shots that you were prepared for ahead of time Pulling focus is something that refers to the idea that when something kind of stuns you or happens out of the blue, you pull focus across the depth of field that it's in very vigorously and very aggressively and very quickly. That way you get you capture those shots as you pull focus through the subject species itself. Now, lastly, following focus is definitely one of the most effective but the most difficult as well. Something that happens like in this white-throated swift video that I filmed in which I'm tracking them back and forth the whole time in their depth of field as they're moving back and forth across the z-axis away from me. So those are the three techniques to manual focusing. You can find more on my main channel if you're interested in learning more. But I hope you found value in this conversation. If you guys have any experiences in autofocus versus manual focus, I'd love to hear your comments below.
and as well as seeing your comments on my White Throated Swift video for a chance to win a free mentorship with me. Details below in the description. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.